The following is distributed by the Berean Call. This is our Understanding the Scripture segment. We're in the Gospel of Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter 3, and we're going to pick up with verse 11. We read it last week, but uh, let's go over it again, Dave. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. And of course, this is John the Baptist speaking. But he that cometh after me, referring to Jesus, is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. That's a controversial verse. What, of course, what does the fire mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I think you would get a hint of it uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Every man's works will be tried by fire. You get a hint of it in Revelation chapter 1, where you see Jesus. This is not some cozy Jesus that you crawl up and sit on his lap like some of the people who have you visualize Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, this is, oh, his eyes are like a flame of fire. His eyes look right through you, okay? This is the fire of God's justice, of God's truth. You can't escape it, but we need that to purify us and to bring us to repentance. So I, I think that's what the fire is. Uh, he's not going to dr drop you in some fire. Mm -hmm. uh, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Now, in I know nothing about Greek, but in Greek, the prepositions are a little bit difficult. Does it mean with, or in, or by? Uh, well, the King James they translated it with the Holy, with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now, I'm going to just point out some uh, comparisons here, and uh, I'm going to leave it up to our listeners to come to their own conclusion. I'm not going to try to force my ideas, but they may find this rather interesting. In every, This is mentioned in all four Gospels. Who's baptizing with the Holy Ghost. Well, it's Jesus. And baptized into, or however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. So, Jesus is the baptizer, and the Holy Spirit is the one into whom we're being baptized. Okay? Now, Tom, uh, as I mentioned, the, the um, prepositions are kind of difficult. Uh, in Greek. Dave, can I say something first? Yeah. You always say, I know nothing about Greek. Now, some people, I, I know that you do know something about Greek, but you, you wouldn't call yourself an expert, but you have, a, you have the ability to check the experts out and see if what they're saying makes sense. Well, now, I, I can go into my concordance. <laughs> right. Yeah. But my point is, is that people say, well, he doesn't know anything about Greek. Why is he even going there and so on? You know, it's just the way you talk. Okay. And just for the sake of our listeners and viewers. Okay. So now, the Bible makes it, it's, it, it is written in such a way that you couldn't make a mistake mm -hmm. about this Greek preposition. Is it in, or is it by, or is it with? Well, because not only does it say the same thing in every um, gospel, it says, let me read it from Matthew again where we are, I indeed baptize you with water. So John is the baptizer, mm -hmm. and you're being baptized into water. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you. Oh, now, not John the baptizer, but Jesus is going to baptize. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. We, we dealt with the fire, but just take that. So apparently, somehow, you're going to be immersed into the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, all right? Now, this is the way. It precisely says it that way in every, every uh, gospel. Now, let's turn to the book of Acts. Mm -hmm. Rather interesting. Now we're showing 
how this carries through into the book of Acts. It's precise. Chapter 1, verse 4, And being assembled together with them, this is Jesus, after his resurrection, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, he have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water. Now, being very precise. Mm -hmm. John was the one who baptized in, into water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from hence. So now as John baptized you into water, so on you're going to you're going to be baptized into the Holy Spirit. This Holy Spirit will be like the water. Uh, it's um, amazing how it is always said that way. In Acts 10, we have Peter who is led of the Holy Spirit to go into the house of Cornelius, a Gentile. Uh, you're not supposed to do that as a Jew, so they thought. But Jesus had said Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay? Um, the disciples couldn't understand that. Verse 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. Well, it sounds kind of like this. The Holy Spirit is the one that in which they are being immersed. And they of the circumcision which believe were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because... On the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. They heard them speak with tongues and magnify God and so forth. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as we have? He commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Now you go to chapter 11. He comes back to, to Jerusalem, and the apostles and elders are just all, all over Peter. You went into the home of the Gentiles. How could you do that? I mean, uh, the Lord had told them that they should, but Peter had pretty strong reason for it. But God had to let a sheet down, you know, and the whole story of unclean animals. He says, he relates what we just read in chapter 10, what happened in Cornelius' household. Then, verse 16, chapter 11, Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, baptize you into water, but ye shall be baptized with into the Holy Ghost. In other words, the same, it's like being baptized into water is being baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, then if we go to 1 Corinthians 12, now he's talking about the gifts of the Spirit. Verse 4, diversities of gifts, same Spirit, diversities of operation, same God, manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man. So there's going to be a manifestation of the Spirit. And then he goes on and says, verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. We had all through the four Gospels made very, very clear, I indeed baptize you in water. Someone's coming along, he's going to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus repeats it in Acts 1. And then Peter says it. Well, we remembered what Jesus had said. As John baptized in water, you'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's what this is. Then 1 Corinthians twelve thirteen. I can't think it's the same thing. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. This is not Christ baptizing us into the Spirit, but this is the Spirit baptizing us into the body of Christ. And that certainly happens to everybody. I believe it happens the moment they're saved. Uh, now, is there something else? Jesus baptizing us into the Holy Spirit? Well... I'm not going to try to tell anyone what I believe, but I will leave it up as I said last week. I've showed you the differences. I've showed you how precise it is stated. I've showed you the difference. This is the Holy Spirit baptizing into the body in 1 Corinthians 12. Is that really Christ baptizing everyone into the Holy Spirit? Well, we'll let everyone come to their own conclusions, and we'll move on next week. 
For more information about the Berean Call and a free subscription to our monthly newsletter, call us at 800-937-6638 or visit our website at www.thebereancall.org.